Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, what is going on? My name is Marin TM, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna be going over how to play all nine zones, or in other words, how to play a full game of Fortnite to the highest possible level. Before we get into that, around 41% of you guys watching are not subscribed, so if you have been enjoying the daily uploads, consider subscribing. Let's also shoot for 2000 likes for the YouTube algorithm, and now, let's get into today's episode. Firstly, we need to talk about before the first zone even appears, the pre-first zone. What you want to do is obviously start off by finding your drop spot, somewhere you're comfortable and where you can get good loot. If you decide to land a POI, you must go on fortnite.gg and look at the POI you're landing at. What you then want to do is understand the strengths and weaknesses of the different buildings. Some buildings have a lot of floor spawns, but not a lot of chests. Others have a ton of chests, but nearly no floor spawns. Some buildings can give you 500 mats in the blink of an eye, whilst others give you near no mats. You have to find the best building suited for your playstyle. For me, the best type of building is the ones with a lot of mats and a lot of chests. I do not necessarily need that many floor spawns, and this is because I'm confident in my own ability to win off spawn fights when I have a lot of mats and an okay weapon. When you've found your drop spot, you have to make a drop map for that specific building in that POI, so that you can get a perfect drop to your building every single time, 100% consistently. Having a drop map will already give you an advantage over literally 99.9% .9 of players in opens tournaments. And it's crucial to have, because competitive Fortnite is all about minimizing RNG. Making a drop map takes a little bit of effort, but it's easily done to a very high standard in a few hours. All you need to do is test different drops in Arena or if you have a creator code in Customs, and find out where you can deploy your glider to get a perfect landing. When you get that perfect landing, mark where you deployed your glider on Fortnite.gg. And boom, you've got one perfect marker on your drop map. Keep doing this process until you have eight markers to know exactly where to deploy your glider for all different kind of bus paths. Okay, so now that you've understood what building to land at to give yourself the advantage, and now that you've made a drop map, it's time to talk about what you should do in the first zone. So the first zone really sets up your entire game and is an arguably one of the most if not the most important zone to stay focused in. In the first zone, you want to focus on a few main things. Firstly, looting perfectly. This means taking every floor spawn, every chest, and very essentially, every ammo box. Then, you want to farm max mats, especially max metal. There is no excuse for not having 500 metal when you rotate out of your drop spot. Unless, of course, your drop spot doesn't have any metal. Which, in my opinion, if that's the case, you might want to change it up and swap landing spots. But if you don't have 500 metal, when leaving, you're doing something wrong. You're making a big competitive mistake. And on the topic of leaving your drop spot, you want to do this when the first zone starts pulling. You want to be ready in a car or quad crasher to rotate the second it starts pulling. When you rotate this early, you can go wherever you want on the map. And for me personally, I always like to predict the second zone. Meaning, I go to the dead side of where I think the second zone is gonna pull. Alright guys, so the first zone starts pulling right now, and now you wanna rotate to where you think the second zone is gonna pull. Try to predict it. So, for me personally, I often like to go all the way to the dead side of the other side, because even if the zone pulls like downwards towards tilted right now, I'm still gonna be on the dead side, because everybody is gonna rotate in from Buggle, Sanctuary, the Dernices, Condo, Chonkers, Rocky, right? So if we can be on the side of Camp Cuddle, this blue marker, Log Gym, and Greasy, then we're gonna be chilling more than anyone else. But right now, I'm gonna predict that the second zone is gonna pull on my blue marker, okay? Another great advantage of rotating this early is that you get to the parts of the map that no one has been to before in your lobby. And this often allows you to find llamas just like I did in this game, right? Let's see where the zone pulls. 
and that is very very close okay so if you played like me to this point you've played your game very near perfectly and when the second zone pops is where you need to be quick you cannot hesitate for five seconds if you end up outside of the zone you need to mark a spot and rotate to it instantly even if you don't mark the best spot in the second zone choosing a spot and going to it instantly so you know you get it is better than thinking for 10 seconds then rotating and not getting the spot when you get to your desired spot preferably on a high ground position you want to build like showcased in the background footage if you can so if you have a mountaintop build like this it gives you awareness and control over the entire lobby but naturally, if you end up on similar or lower elevation compared to most other players in your lobby, you have to build a normal box. The reason, however, this space is so incredibly good is firstly because you save a lot of mats. Secondly, you get full awareness and control as mentioned. And you can get enough surge tags for the rest of the game if you play it right, assuming you are in a surge lobby. Refarming is also a crucial part of playing the second zone. Always cap your mats out when you've based up. You can even drop 100 spare wood and brick or one of the two and cap yourself out. So you have those extra mats in case someone starts shooting out your base or walls. Moving on to the third zone, you want to rotate instantly on this one as well with 555 mats, trying to get a good position near or in center getting center in this zone gives you the fourth zone for free a hundred percent of the time but in spite of that don't ever be greedy to get center in third if you see five boxes with duos in front of you and you're in a car going for center then please hop out of the car a little bit before you reach center because as long as you're somewhat close to center you've done a good rotate to the third zone but remember don't blindly go for center no matter what look at your situation and think can i get center without getting lobby focus it's not worth burning a thousand mats to get center third if you do end up getting that perfect center position you do not want to use brick but instead use your metal to build a box with the reason you want to use metal is because being in center third opens a rather okay possibility of getting the fifth or 50 50 zone the fourth zone as we know is yours guaranteed so if you get a center position in a third zone always use metal Guys, that is gonna wrap it up for part one of how to play all nine zones in Fortnite. Tomorrow, the same time this one is released today, I'll publish part two. So be on the lookout for that. If you have any questions regarding anything I've said in today's episode, leave them in the comments below. And if you want a separate video on how to predict zones, then let me know as well. Other than that, please go on to have an amazing, productive day. My name is Marin TM. Stay safe and take care. You know me, she'll know